Hey, I'm Dr. John Duyard. Welcome to LifeSpot.com. We prove the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda with modern science. And today I want to talk about an ancient Ayurvedic concept called samskaras, which are old impressions that are carried on generationally. And in Western medicine, this is called trans or intergenerational transmission of stress. We now have really good science to show that if one generation is under a lot of stress, as a way to protect the species, the future generations, the body will pass on some genetic information to protect it from harm's way. They did a study with rabbits, for example, and every time the rabbit smelled peppermint oil, they poked it with a little bit of a, a needle. And soon the rabbit became associated the peppermint smell with getting picked, pinched by the, by the needle and uh, they became afraid of the peppermint oil. So three generations later, when the, when the baby rabbits would smell peppermint oil, they would freak out. So that kind of impressionable stress can get passed on from generation to the generation up to six different generations, which is really kind of important. And this happened with uh, one of the greatest examples when uh, Nazi Germany uh, basically took over the Netherlands and they block the food coming in and out of the Netherlands. Nobody can come in, no trucks come in, and 20,000 people died of starvation during that, during that whole thing in, in World War II. And the offspring of those folks, when they measured them, they had significant increased risk of obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, emotional concerns, and schizophrenia. Obviously, a lot of emotional trauma was there as well. And when they looked at what caused that, they found a signature, an epigenetic signature. And they found that this was a genetic trait that was actually passed on to protect the species. And maybe in some way it doesn't always protect. Similar thing happened with the Holocaust victims. And when they were pregnant, those offspring, those kids that, that of the kids, the parents that survived the Holocaust, they had significant issues with, mel uh, with methylation, which is the ability to detoxify as well as issues with their stress hormone. And again, they found it as a genetic signature and that it was, cat was carried on or passed down in that way. Uh, one of my favorite studies was with worms. And they found that when worms, they gobble up soil and in the soil are microbes. And a lot of times they eat a bug that was bad and it, and it could kill the worm. And right before the worm would pass away, the worm would actually lay a bunch of eggs, sort of a, another species survival thing. And those eggs would hatch and they would have new worms and those new worms would have the, the insight genetically to avoid the same bacteria that that mama daddy worm ate that actually took them out. So again, it's that beautiful way of we, how we pass this down from species to species. And, and so it is true that emotional stress, any kind of stress that, that um, is in really a deep impression. So if your whole life you're just thinking, I need my red wine, or I need my coffee, or I, or I have this major jealousy thing, or I have this major emotional thing, that really kind of is, you know, really is um, part of your chit, you know, part of who you really are, that impression will be carried down genetically up to six generations, depending how strong that is. But the good news about that is that the good stuff gets carried on too. So if you have that ability to be sattvic, and I wrote an, IRB, an article called um, The Science of Sattva. Sattva is a state of mind where you're giving and loving and kind and caring for others for no reason. You give because you love to give. You don't need anything in return. It's this natural state of being. That kind of behavior, which is what Ayurveda talked about, you know, and suggested that that's ultimately the way that we should be. And now we have the science to back that up. When you are living a more sattvic, giving, loving, caring life for others, you produce way more of the longevity hormone called oxytocin. And the more that you give in love and care, the more of this longevity hormone, bonding hormone, loving hormone that you make. You cannot de get depleted of it. The flip side of that is dopamine, the reward chemistry. I give you a present, I want you to tell me how great I am. 
Well, that's a return on my investment. That's a dopamine reward chemistry. The more I stimulate those receptors, the bigger the stimulant I need to get that same reward, right? So it depletes us and those, those receptors can actually burn out. And then you have no ability to get happy or satisfied in your life and you become sort of depressed. That's what Ayurveda calls tamasic behavior, just withdrawn and retreated because you burned out your award chemistry. Award chemistry is fine, but we can easily overdo it. And our culture is doing a bang up job of that for sure. Studies show that when you're sattva giving and loving that your good bugs proliferate, your bad bugs disappear. Studies show that when you spend money on somebody else, even if you had none, and they did this over 136 countries, they found that people were happier when they were spending money, no matter how poor they were, when they were spending money on somebody else than giving it to themselves. We also know that when you give and care for others in a, in a eudaimonic way, which is I give you something, but I don't get anything in return. I don't want anything in return. I'm not looking for anything in return. Versus giving somebody something and expecting a reward called hedonistic giving. The hedonistic giving where I needed something pat on the back or a turn on my investment had a negative effect on the genetic code of the people I were giving it to. When I was giving it eudaimonically, no expectation required, it had a positive effect on the genetic code we were giving it to. So the cool thing is that some scars are impressions that are passed on generationally. It's called inner uh, generational transmission of stress, but it doesn't have to be stress. The good stuff can get passed on too. So that's my encouragement for all of us is to realize that uh, um, as one of my favorite sayings, the most important things for us to do as human beings is to be kind. That's the first thing. The second most important thing we can do in our life as human beings is to be kind. And the third most important thing we can do in our life to be good human beings is to be kind. And if we can realize that that is actually living a sattvic life and we have the science to show what it does to us, that's a good road to hope. If you're watching this on my website at lifespot.com, please subscribe to our channel, get all this kind of information on a regular basis. If you're watching on a social platform, please subscribe uh, and follow me. And also, um, you know, while you're on our store at lifespot.com, please check out all of our Ayurvedic supplies, organic herbs, organic Ayurvedic skincare, and all of that. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Vera. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.